headed to uh, Pinyao today. And why are we going there? We are going for fun. We're going to ride the train that goes all along the river, all the way east. And we're going to get out at Pinyao. We're going to have lunch. The plan is to have lunch at Veladoru. Thanks to Josh and Kaylee, who told us about it in a video. We're going to take a boat cruise up the Dora River on a Ravella boat. And then we are going to do yes. a wine tasting <laughs> at Quinta da Foz. And what's great about this is that it's all within walking distance, within blocks of where we get off the uh, train. So this is going to be fun. We'll report back to you later. Thanks for, you for tuning in to our continuing adventure. As always, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you're already subscribed, thank you so much. Yes, we're in the train station. There's other noises going on. So anyway, we will see you later. our train as soon as it pulls in. Uh, I don't know if you can imagine there'll be some people getting up. We can get on board, get our seats. We're not tough to sit on the right side because it goes right up the Border River and we want to make sure we got some really good uh, uh, availability to get some pictures. Pinyao, two and a half hours, there goes the train. Town is behind us and we're headed for lunch. Pinyao is about 75 miles um, east of uh, Porto, two and a half hours on the train. So we're hungry and thirsty. Let's do See it. See you soon. Mmm, this is great. This food is great. Best cake I've had in a really long time. I also have salmon and yummy tapes. And where are we? We are in Veladoru restaurant in Pinyao. Is, uh, complete. What you think? It's beautiful. Headed for our wine tasting at Quinta de Foz. It's FOZ. FOZ. So we're going to check that out.
<laughs> it was great. Uh, you know, it's, it's a fairly short train right away, a little over two hours. And the main thing we chose, the main reason we chose Pinyao was because it's compact. It's small, quaint, and everything we wanted to do, uh, go to lunch, uh, wine tasting, uh, a boat ride up the Doro River. They were all within like a 10 minute walk or less. So it made it very easy to get that all into one day trip without feeling stressed and rushed. Right. Right. Yeah. It's great. As I said, we took the train from Sao Bento Station here in Porto and uh, went right straight to Pinhao. No changing trains. This is a little over two hours, about an hour inland. And then all of a sudden it opens up and you're riding right along the Douro River. A beautiful ride. It was gorgeous. It, it was gorgeous. I mean, the, the weather was excellent. Um, and for us, we are seniors. That means we're over 65 here. We get 50% off. So the round trip trip for us was just 22 euros for the, for the whole thing. I have that in the description below to give you an idea of how to find your ticket, what to look for. Uh, we always look for a train that where we don't have to change trains, that it's a it's straight through. And uh, that's always uh, if possible. a little, yeah, if possible. And that makes the, the day a lot easier. Mm -hmm. So, um, don't hesitate to email us if you have any questions about using the um, trains here in uh, Portugal. Right. The train got us into Pinhao about quarter till 12. Mm -hmm. And um, we planned on having lunch at, at noon so we could keep on our schedule that we made for ourselves. Right. And um, we found our restaurant, the Velo Douro Bar and Restaurant. Uh, we heard about it from uh, friends and we had a great meal. It was so delicious. Uh, a little bit pricier than we normally spend on lunch, but hey, this is a day trip. It was special. <laughs> so, you know, it was like entrees were about 18 euros each and wine was extra and dessert was extra and, you know, things like bread and olives on the table. We decided we wanted and those are a little bit extra. So, but shoot, I think it was maybe 60 euros for right. Ross and I. Right. So it was wonderful. It was delicious. I had a great steak. And we had salmon and yum. It was so good. Yes, it wasn't your regular pratudia for like uh, seven euros here. <laughs> no. Definitely, it was excellent food. Service was great. And again, the surroundings were, were wonderful. We're sitting out on the terrace overlooking the river. Uh, can't beat that. No. Right? One other thing about lunch was that we weren't able to make reservations at uh, Restaurante Veladoro, or Restaurant Veladoro. So we had several other restaurants picked out as backups, and I have listed those in the description below as well. So after lunch, boat trip. It was only a five minute walk away. Uh, our boat was there, ready to, to board. Uh, we got on with a lot of other people, and it was, it was great. It, was, it wasn't uh, a guided tour. There was no uh, description of what we were seeing. It was just a very relaxing uh, boat trip up the river and then back to where we started in Pinhao. One thought we had, what, what you were talking to oh. me about children. Yeah, yeah, I, I really think, you know, having grandsons, mm -hmm. I'm more aware it's not for kids. 
um, it, it was too relaxing. They would get bored in a flash. And we took the smaller one, the smaller, less time tour, right. 30 minutes up the river, 30 minutes back. And I guarantee you, most children after five minutes would be over it. And um, but there was a bar in the back and a WC if you needed mm -hmm. that. Um, it was a perfect adult relax trip. Yeah, I mean, and I think the kids would probably spe enjoy spending more time at the playground that was right <laughs> yeah, there by the river right. than being on the boat. But mm -hmm. your choice, but just a heads up on that. Yep. So after the boat ride, we had uh, probably a 10 minute, actually, I think we took 15 minutes and made a very leisurely stroll to our Quinta. So we went to Quinta de Foz, or Foz, and it was a smaller producer, Quinta, very close. We didn't want to take an Uber or a cab anywhere out, and this was right there close by, and it was so nice. It was, yeah, really nice. oh man, yeah. it was so nice. We got a tour of the facility, of the production facilities, and the mm. people were just so fabulous, so accommodating, and they spoke English. Very well. uh, really, our our guide, uh, young woman, her name was Ines, and yes. she did fabulous. She gave us so much information uh, about how they make their wine and how they came to have this winery, and it was just very interesting. Everything was interesting, nothing boring. And we got all our questions answered and then we went for the wine tasting. And we chose a dry wine tasting. Mm -hmm. A lot of places pretty much do port wine. We've already done two port wine tastings, so we didn't want to do a port wine tasting. This winery has both. Uh, some other wineries I'm sure have both also. But we did, uh, three reds and three whites, dry wines, and um, we learned each wine story, and mm -hmm. uh, we tasted, and we had a little cracker in their olive, oh, their olive oil um, in between just to cleanse the palate along with water, and we really, I thought it was an excellent, excellent. I felt like we got a great pour, we got to relax, nobody was rushing us, yeah. we could carry on conversation with other people that came to sit down at the big table and have a tasting also, and it was just, it was fun, it, it was great. Yeah, it was very personal, and mm. and in going through the, the winery and, and all, it's very historic as well, I mean, there's hand-painted tiles on the wall. Um, the the casks how they were made these these huge barrels where they aged the wine i mean they you know they're taller than i am um and there's something very unique i'm gonna t i'm gonna mention this about that this is one of the few wineries where they still crush the grapes by feet and this is not for all their wines this is for a select uh grouping of the wines that they sell of reds we, of reds mm -hmm. and we happen to bring one of those bottles home uh from our tasting that we like yeah. but uh, uh it just it was really a great way to to learn even more about the wines of this region go ahead oh and we're uh, down below we're going to put the link to this yes. quinta and i'm pretty sure there's a picture of some feet that were been in the <laughs> dance around on the grapes. I think she told us they do it for like four, four hours. hours straight. Six guys join S arms and they, they just do it and they bring music they in dance away. and they dance <laughs> and because it has to go, it's a very time sensitive deal, I guess. Yeah. It was great information. So yeah. So yes, the the links are below. You do need to make a reservation. We we encourage that. Um, and it was just, it was a beautiful Can't setting. Can't enough. And yeah. the view was just stunning because, you know, everywhere you look, if you look out the window or look out when you're walking, you see these beautiful hills with the vineyards mm -hmm. that are just now starting. Okay, it was March 29th. Yes. Just now beginning to form leaves. So you can't really see that they're really grapevines, but they are. And there's olive trees everywhere too. So it's just beautiful. It's going to change with the seasons. Right, in the fall, it'll all be fall colors, the mm. leaves of the vines and everything. So it should be stunning. So we, we can't say enough about um, Quinto de Foz. And Foz stands for, if I'm not mistaken, like the meeting of two waters, like two rivers coming together. Um, the mouth 
the mouth of the of the river, the little inlet right. to the daughter river. Yeah, so yeah. that's that's why the Quinta, the farm, is named uh, Foz. So it was great. We loved it. We would go again. Yes, probably in the fall. <laughs> So I guess you could tell that we chose this particular winery because it was a small producer mm. and that we were really wanting uh, dry wines. Um, but in Pinal, there are two more that are very walkable that you can just walk right to. One, you can walk across the bridge. And I think that is called, what is Carvalhos. it? The Carvalhos. Yes. yes. And then there's also the Bon, bon Fin. Yes. Um, Quinta. Quinta de Bonfi, mm -hmm. yeah, and that's all in walking distance. It's like and, right at the end of and town. And the reason why we didn't pick them is because they're huge producers, mm -hmm. and their wines are available, many of them are available, and even in the grocery stores, all the bottle shops. Right. But this winery, they don't even sell to any, they, they, they deliver to your home. Quinta de Foz. Quinta de Foz. Right. So it's like, it was real appealing because it was something unique. We are definitely going to plan an overnight, mm. and um, we're going to visit some other wineries there, and yes. maybe go to this one again. It was so great. <laughs> it was good. Yeah, and uh, um, there are a couple of hotels that we had checked out. Mm -hmm. um, there's also Airbnbs. We wineries. have two hotels that we've done some research on that we have in the description below that, again, are right in town. You can get off the train and almost fall down and be at the front door. So. Um, like I said, those are in the description below. So thanks again for tuning in, for listening to us explain some of our adventures here in Portugal. Uh, please like, subscribe, and definitely share. Thank you. What, what adventure, adventure are you, you on today? today? Thank you.